The Great Gildersleeve. A special rebroadcast for all you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations. Listen to another amazing episode in the life of the great Gildersleeve. Now let's join the great Gildersleeve. He's already tried three times to get his old friend Judge Hooker on the telephone. Hello, Judge. About time you got up. Listen. Get over here right away, will you? I'll tell you what it's about when you get here. I'll tell you what it's about when you get here. I'll tell you what it's about when you get... Dolores Del Rey is suing me for breach of promise. Well, all right. Oh, so that's what he thinks. Oh, Uncle Mortis, you're really going to sue you after all? Well, I'm afraid so, children. She realizes that a public trial will probably ruin my career, and she's using it to shake some money out of me. Are there really women like that? I'll say. You know nothing about it. (laughs) I'll thank you to remember that. If you hear anybody discussing this case... You too, Marjorie. Okay. Whatever we know about this, we'll keep in our little family. Understand? Yes, sir. Now get out of here so I can be alone with Judge Hooker. You mean go skating? No, I mean go write your letters. (laughs) There's the judge. Listen, Hooker, take a look at this. What is it? The fella handed to me last night. I just got my glasses on here. Oh, take your time, Judge. Just a man's good name and reputation at stake, that's all. Now, let's see. What have we here? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Willfully and with intent to deceive. All seems in good order. Well? Gildy, do you know what this means? No, Judge. What? You're being sued. <laughs> Ye gods, I don't need a lawyer to tell me that, Judge. What am I going to do about it? That's what I want to know. Well, in the first place, you have to file an answer. Look, Judge, you told me yourself only one week ago that the woman has no case. How about that? Well, that was my personal opinion, Gildy. I merely gave it to you for what it was worth. Well, for what it's worth, you can have it back. (laughs) Furthermore, I was evidently not in possession of all of the facts at the time. If the charges here are true. Oh? What do you mean? Is it true, as it says here, that you and the plaintiff discussed the question of marriage? Well, I... Told her she ought to get married, but... Answer yes or no. Yes. But I was proposing she should marry you, and you know that. Maybe I do, and maybe I don't. Is it true that uh, following the aforementioned discussion of marriage, you kissed the plaintiff? None of your business. Now, Gildy, I'm your lawyer, and I have to know. Well, I never would have kissed her if I'd known she was going to be a plaintiff. But you did kiss her. Well, when a lady throws her arms around you and hollers, kiss me, what are you going to do? you got to be polite. <laughs> That's bad. You propose to the lady she should marry someone else, and then you seal it with a kiss. It'll never stand up in court. Well, that's what happened. What am I going to do, Horace? Well, we'd better get hold of her lawyer, Waldo Barker. Waldo Barker? What kind of a lawyer is he? Well, they call him Weeping Waldo. Good man in front of a jury. I'll call him in the morning. You'll call him right now. But, Gildy... You get a hold of him, tell him we'll be right over there. Counselor, I'd like to have you meet my client, Mr. Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve, eh? Well, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, sir, I heard a lot. It's a pleasure to meet you. I wish I could say the same. Well, it's some time since I've had the pleasure of opposing you in court, Judge. Yes, Judge. You lawyers, thicker than thieves. Last time was in the Anthony case, as I remember. It involved a dog. Yes, yes. One of the best witnesses I ever had. Said nothing and did as he was told. (laughs) I won that case, as I remember. Miscarriage of justice. And then we opposed each other again in Fadkin versus Summerfield Light and Power, remember? Manhole cover. I'll never forget it. (laughs) I won that case, too, if you'll recall. Another miscarriage. Judge, didn't you ever win the case? Look, gentlemen, I don't like to interrupt your chummy reminiscences, but we've got a lawsuit here, remember? Now, Gildy, all in good time. The law has many fascinating angles, Mr. Gildersleeve, and one of the most fascinating is breach of promise. Uh, You recall the case of Bohack versus Gaines, Judge? No, I can't say that I do. I'm not up on breach of promise. Oh, fine. 
Uh, well, uh, the point at issue there was whether a cider jug thrown in the heat of argument but without intent to maim or kill constitutes an appropriate termination of contract to marry. I uh, don't need to remind you that the woman won. I might point out, however, Counselor, that the facts are a little different in this case. Oh, I quite agree. I merely mentioned it because it was interesting. No, no, no. This is an open and shut case, if I ever saw one. Hey. Now that we're not prepared to admit. In fact, the whole thing is nothing but a frame-up, Counselor, and you know it. Oh, now, Gildy. Now, 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 Commissioner, let's not get excited. I understand your feelings. You, you're a man of some reputation in this town, and a thing like this can be very embarrassing. It might even cost you your career, not to mention the cost of defending a long, drawn-out suit in court. But it doesn't need to get to court. Oh? What do you mean? Well, if they're handled in the proper way, these things can be settled out of court. How much? Well, I haven't consulted my client, but I would imagine that a settlement of $5,000... 5000 Well, you're getting off cheap. I think you ought to consider it, Gildy. Listen, you old goat. What did I hire you for? You're supposed to be my lawyer. And as your lawyer, I advise you to settle the case. Very sound, Judge. You lawyers make me sick. Always getting together to cut up somebody else's money. I take it, then, that you don't intend to settle. Settle? I'll fight this case to the finish. I'll fight it all the way to the Supreme Court and back. I'll fight this case if I have to handle it myself. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Now let's get back to poor old Gildersleeve. He spent the afternoon in the public library, reading the law on breach of promise and studying the rules of court procedure until he's completely confused on both of those subjects. A supper of fried oysters, baked beans, and dill pickles lies none too comfortably on his stomach as we find him now fitfully dozing on the couch in his parlor. Dozing and dreaming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. The Superior Court Summer Fields now in session. Let all transgressors be brought to the bar of justice to pay the penalty demanded by the law. And here is your judge for this afternoon's trial. That celebrated star of bar and bench, Carl W. Hofstetter. Thank you, clerk of the Superior Court, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First case, Delray versus Gildersleeve. <laughs> Is the court stenographer ready? Yes, Your Honor. Plaintiff's counsel ready? Yes, Your Honor. Defendant's counsel ready? Uh, I'm handling my own case, Your Honor. You are? <laughs> I object! Objection overruled. The court will now hear the opening statement for the plaintiff. Mr. Barker. Your Honor, and my very good friends, the jury, this is an action in breach of promise instituted in behalf of the plaintiff, Miss Dolores Del Rey, whom you see sitting there before you. And by the way, did anyone ever look lovelier? <laughs> lovely, lovely. I shall prove to you before this trial is over that this little flower, this tender blossom, who sits here bathed in the dew of her tears, has been the victim of this designing monster. Ooh! I object! Objection overruled. Proceed. As my first witness, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you at this time the little lady herself, <coughs> Miss Dolores Del Rey. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you so much. Gentlemen of the jury, Miss Del Rey. <laughs> oh, I love you all. And now, Miss Del Rey... I'd like to have you meet Judge Hofstetter. Ah, I am charmed. You know, I think I meet you someplace before, Judge, no? Ooh, could be. Uh, you don't happen to know Kitty McClure, do you? Oh, but she's one of my best friends. Well, what do you know? Say, what are you doing after? I object! What? <laughs> oh, objection sustained. <laughs> 
Uh, the court is out of order. You're telling me. Attorney for the prosecution will continue with the witness. Uh, Miss Del Rey, we know how painful all this must be to you. But I'm going to ask you to try to recall for the jury. Is it not true that this man here, Mr. Gildersleeve, was at one time very dear to you? Oh, please. <laughs> you see, gentlemen, simple and trusting, she came to him wide-eyed like a child. To him, it was just another conquest. But to her, to her, it was the flowering of true love. Ah, love. What a world of tender meaning lies within that one word, love. Poets have written whole poems about it. Men have died for it. And this poor child, you see what it has done to her. Uh, Has the clerk got a handkerchief? Handkerchief for his honor. Oh, thanks. Uh, Proceed. Miss Del Rey. I am going to ask you only one question. Is it not true that Mr. Gildersleeve, on various occasions, made to you protestations of undying affection? Is it not true that he begged you to marry him? Is it not true that he subsequently spurned you in a cruel and unusual manner? Oh, please! Her tears are your answer, gentlemen. I rest my case. Help the lady down from the stand there, somebody. Not everybody! (laughs) Jury, stay in your box. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, have you any defense? I certainly have, Your Honor. I should like to introduce first the testimony of an old and trusted servant who has been in my employ for many years, Miss Bertie Lee Coggins. Bertie? I'm coming. Yeah. Just climb right up there, Bertie. Yeah, that's it. Now, will you tell these people what kind of an employer I've been, Bertie? Mr. Gillsleeve is a fine man. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Tell them some more. He's a fine man, that's all. May I ask to witness a question? (laughs) Oh, certainly. Go right ahead. Did you ever see Mr. Gildersleeve in a tete-a-tete with Miss Del Rey? Mr. Gildersleeve is a fine man. Answer the question. He's a fine man. (laughs) If it please the court, the witness refuses to answer the questions put to her. Answer the gentleman's question. Did you ever find them embracing? I still say he's a fine man. You want to be cited for contempt of court? I ain't talking about the court. I'm talking about Mr. Gilsey. And he's a fine man. The witness has obviously been coached. That's a lie. Next witness. Yes, Your Honor. (laughs) My next witness, ladies and gentlemen is well known to Summerfield. Miss Eve Goodwin, principal of our local grammar school. Uh, Tell him the kind of fellow I am, Eve. All right, Throckmorton. Your Honor, Mr. Gildersleeve is a very high-minded man, devoted to the public welfare. He's shown his loyalty to the community by his long service as water commissioner and as a member of the school board. I've always known him to be honest, upright, Kind and good. Yeah. <laughs> there. Tie that, Mr. Barker. Is that all you want from this witness? Well, who could ask for anything more? You want a cross-question, Mr. Barker? Just two questions, Your Honor. Miss Goodwin, were you ever engaged to marry Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, I was. Did he marry you? No, he didn't. That's all. I object! This wasn't the same kind of a situation. Objection overruled. Have you any more witnesses, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, yes. I'd like to call on an old friend and neighbor to say a few words at this time. Mrs. Leela Ransom. Uh, you'll step up to the witness stand, please, Leela. Must I smile at the jury, Throckmorton? I'm afraid you'll have to do more than that. <laughs> Leave it to me. Uh-huh. Well, good morning, Judge. Uh, tell me, are you related to any of the Virginia Hofsteaders by any chance? Nope. Oh. Mm. Proceed with the case. Uh, uh, Mrs. Ransom, how long have you known me? Well, let me see, Throckmorton. It must be about two and a half years. I remember because that was the fall Cousin Ellie had a baby. Uh, he's the same age as Cindy Lou's child, and Cindy Lou's child is two and a half. Oh, great. great. <laughs> You've known me two and a half years. Yes. Uh, in all that time, have you ever known me to do a dishonorable thing? Great. 
gracious, I should say not. Why, Throckmorton is the soul of honor. It's ridiculous all the things they're saying about him here. Throckmorton wouldn't hurt a fly. He may go around kissing everybody, but he doesn't mean anything by it. <laughs> Will the witness please address the jury? The, the jury? Oh, hello there. Nice y'all could come. This is, uh, I give up. Your witness, Parker. Mrs. Ransom. Were you ever engaged to marry Mr. Gildersleeve? Why, yes, I was. Did he marry you? No, he didn't, but That's I... That's all. No, I object. Objection overruled. But, Your Honor, you can see this man has no witnesses. All he has is a long record of breach of promise. That's not true. <laughs> Phoebe, come up here. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, what can I do for you this afternoon? Peavy, just get up there on the witness stand and tell the truth, will you, Peavy? Uh, now, you're a druggist here in Summerfield, are you not? A pharmacist, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> All right, then, a pharmacist. I come into your store quite frequently, do I not? Well, Objection. I... Defendant is leading the witness. Sustain. You can't put words in the witness' mouth, Mr. Gildersleeve. Just ask him questions. Oh, oh sorry, Judge. I'm a little new at this. <laughs> Well, Peavy, am I a customer of yours? Yes, you are, Mr. Gallistain. Fine. Now, how often do I come into your store? Is that all right, Your Honor? Uh, yes, that's all right. How often does he come into your store, Peavy? Well, now, that's a question. He, he was in yesterday. Yes, but how often do I come in? Mm, hard to say. Would you say he comes in once a month? Well, some months he does. <laughs> Would you say I come in once a week? Some weeks, yes. Does he ever come in more than once a day? Some days, yes. Well, confound it. Then he comes into your store quite frequently, doesn't he? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Let it go, PV. Now, look, do you remember my talking to you about Miss Del Rey? Uh, yes, I believe I do. Great. Uh, did you ever hear me say anything about marrying her? Marrying her? Yeah. Marrying her? Yes. Not that I remember. Mm. All right. In your opinion, he's nothing but a woman chaser. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> By George, Peavy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm indifferent to women, am I not? No, I wouldn't say that. Peavy, you're the world's worst witness. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I give up. Your witness, Barker. I pass. Well, any more witnesses for the defense? I guess not, Your Honor. I guess I'm through. Is that all? Well, you've got no case whatsoever, Gildersleeve. But, Your Honor, I never thought of marrying this woman. Nobody has proved I asked her to marry me. Uh, hmm. uh, Your Honor, may I recall Miss Del Rey to the stand? Go ahead. Uh, now, uh, Miss Del Rey, you say Mr. Gildersleeve asked you to marry him. Oh, yes, he certainly did. Uh, do you recall the words in which he proposed to you? Ah, uh -huh, yes, I recall them very well. Would you mind repeating them, please? No, not at all. Exactly as he said them. Yes, sir. Besame. Besame mucho. I object. That's nothing but a song. I intend to show your honor that defendant Gildersleeve offered marriage to my client in the course of the song. Mr. Gildersleeve, did you sing this song to Miss Del Rey? Well, yes. Then you'll hold your peace until she's had her say. Uh... Proceed, uh, Miss Del Rey. Oh, thank you, Judge. You're so kind. Proceed. Besame. Uh, that means kiss me. It's uh, Spanish. Proceed. Besame mucho. Uh, that means uh, kiss me plenty. It does not. Proceed. Each time I cling to your kiss, I hear music. Divine. Well, now I ask you, if the defendant said that... It's just a song. Quiet. Ah, this is a musical treat the court seldom enjoys. Besame mucho. Kiss me, you too. Yeah. Hold me, my darling, and say that you'll always be mine. Uh, um, I, uh, I don't like to interrupt the court's pleasure, but uh, I wish to call particular attention to that last phrase. Hold me, my darling, and say that you'll always be mine. There's the whole thing in a nutshell. Let the lady sing. This joy is something new. My arms enfolding you. 
Never knew this thrill before. <laughs> Whoever thought I'd be holding you close to me, whispering at you, I adore. Beautiful. Lovely. And they call this justice. <laughs> Dearest one, if you should leave me, all of my dreams would take wing and my life would be through. I call the court's attention to... Shut up! <laughs> Besame mucho. Love me forever and make all my dreams come true. Ah, oh, thank you, Miss Del Rey. Well, I don't know how you fellows feel about it in the jury, but that's enough for me. What? How about it, boys? Have you reached the verdict? Wait, wait! Well, what is it you wish to say, you fiend in human form? I want a lawyer! Sorry you've had your chance. All right, gentlemen, you may give your verdict. No, 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 no! What's it for? Oh, Mr. Gilsey, you must have fell asleep. The judge is here. What judge? Judge Hooker. Who do you think? Hooker, don't let him go, Bertie. Tell him to wait. Tell him I want to see him. I'm not going, Gildy. Thank you, Bertie. You're welcome. Oh, Judge, am I ever glad to see you. That case. Listen. That's just what I dropped in to talk to you about. I've just been through it. I mean, I had a dream. I mean, something tells me... Uh, never mind. We've got to settle it, Judge. Do anything but settle it. But you can't settle it now, Gildy. He'll double the ante. He'll make it 10000 instead of five. <laughs> no, Gildy. We'll do it your way. What do you mean? I'm going to fight. Oh, uh, that's the stuff. Yes, by golly, they can't scare me. I'll carry this case all the way to the Supreme Court. I'll fight this thing through to the finish if it takes every cent you've got. <laughs> Well, still, that's less than $5,000. Hey, Gildy, I just had a better idea. This way, it won't cost you a cent. Oh, what is it, Horace? Why don't you marry the girl? Why not? He. 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 I better sleep on it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> uh...